The second beatitude of Revelation, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, who are those who keep the commandments and the faith of Jesus. This is part 110 of the Revelation study. We've been working through the book of Revelation. We're currently in Revelation 14, which has all type of portraits about the last day. And we find, though, right in the middle of it, there's a beatitude. It's a statement about those who are blessed. So we need to look at that. It's beautiful. As we look at this, we're going to compare Scripture with Scripture because Jesus is the Word of God. His words are spirit. So we compare spiritual with spiritual. A little bit here, a little bit there. God's thoughts are precious unto us. And we want to look at all of his thoughts, the sum of them, Psalm 139. So we don't want to isolate ourselves in a small part of Scripture. We have to be broad enough to look through the Scripture. Please consider subscribing to this channel. And let's move on in this study. Okay, here is the passage. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed, that's what a beatitude is, it's a blessing. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. This is the second of seven blessings that are in the book of Revelation. Um, and, and we want to answer the questions, who are the dead who die in the Lord? And it's the present tense in this, this verse. But who are they? And we want to look at this idea about patience and keeping the commandments of God, holiness, faith of Jesus. They're all evidences of salvation. We want to look at those, make sure we understand this. So let's move on in the study. I'm not going to go through these, but here are the seven Beatitudes of Revelation. I'll tag this slide with uh, Revelation 1-3, which we've already looked at. We've done a study on that before. It was those who read, hear, and keep the prophecy of Revelation. Prophecy is important. But today we're going to look at Revelation 14, 12, and 13. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, and it's those who keep the commandments and the faith of Jesus. Okay, first let's understand what blessed means. It's one of those words that gets used a lot, but sometimes people forget what it means. First, blessing is the opposite of a curse. Deuteronomy 28, so it's either a blessing or a curse. And bless, uh, the parable of the sheep and the goats explains the difference. So if we carefully look at it in Matthew 25, 34, Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. That's eternal salvation. To be blessed means to be saved, to have the highest spiritual good. Matthew 25, 41, but then he says to them on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. So that's the simplicity of this, is blessing is salvation, and cursing is damnation. Romans 4, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man through the Lord will not impute sin. It's all about salvation. It's a characteristic of one who is saved. Okay, the Beatitude says, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. And it's very interesting that that is a, in the present tense in the Greek language. Blessed are the dead, which means they're currently dead, and then the dead die. And it's kind of a curious statement, but it's easily solved when we realize that Christians, when we live our life in this world, we're, we die to this world. We're, and there's many passages that say this. And we're going to look at that in the next couple of slides. All Christians have died with Christ on the cross. If you be risen with Christ, and just like we die on the Christ, we've been risen with him to walk in newness of life. If you've been risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits at the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on the things of the earth. For ye are dead, present tense. You are dead if you're a Christian. And you say, well, how can that be? And your life is hid with Christ and God. But we're dead in things of this world, in our love of this world, and our affection for the things of this world. First Corinthians fifteen thirty one. I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. So let's look at the next couple of slides and just understand that a little bit more clearly. We also see that Christians were crucified with Christ. We've been crucified. Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. 
nevertheless I live. Even though we were put to death, we are crucified with Christ, we still live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Jesus' faith. Faith of the Son of God. Belonging to Jesus, who loved me and gave himself for me. And we see that, how do we die? They that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. A Christian is a life of overcoming the, 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 the lust of this world. We're no longer interested in the lusts of this world and having the pleasures and things of this world. Where we, our minds are focused on things above. We're always delivered to death, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. We're crucified with Christ. The lusts of the flesh are crucified. We die daily. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. We're, we're like sacrifices. We present our bodies as living sacrifices. That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death works in us, but life in you. It's all about how, how is it that we can be a faithful witness for Christ? How is it that possibly we can be used in some humble way to, 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 in, in, in the Lord Jesus Christ's master plan? We're always delivered to death. Okay, so let's move on. Revelation 14, 12, we see here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God in the faith of Jesus. And patience is important. Patience is what faith is all about. If you didn't need to be patient and you need to, didn't need to wait for anything, there'd be no faith. Our faith is, in, is, is a gift from God and we're looking forward to the last day where we'll, we'll be reunited in the new heavens and the new earth. It's our future hope. Colossians 1.11, Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. We joyfully serve in this world. Christians should be joyful. And we, we serve, and, but we have patience. It's a characteristic because our hope is in the future. Our hope is not in this world. 2 Thessalonians 1, 4, so that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith and all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. That's what the Christian life is about. If we want to live a holy life, all of a sudden we find ourselves kind of put on the side. We're excluded. We're a sidelight. We're, 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 we're not accepted in this world because this world is lusting after the flesh. And we see most importantly in Galatians 5.22 that the fruit of the Spirit, it's a, it's a, it's a characteristic of being a Christian, is, is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Long-suffering, patience, to, to wait, be willing to long-suffer, waiting for that blessed day that, of our future hope. Okay, we also see in this Revelation 14, 12, that the, the patience is in keeping the commandments. And we know that keeping the commandments of God, and we know that in the flesh, because we still have the flesh, we can't do this perfectly. And we stumble, but, but we are have overcoming, we're changed from glory to glory. But we see important information in 1 John 2 that one of the proofs or the characteristics of being a Christian is keeping the commandments. Hereby we know that we know him. So we, we, it, it can be seen that we know Christ if we keep his commandments. He that says, I know him, someone that says, I'm a Christian, but doesn't keep his commandments, is a liar. They're a fraud. They're a hypocrite, and the truth is not in them. But whoso keeps his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. If we keep his word, it's all about the Bible. Jesus is the word of God, and we find that in the Bible. And we love the Bible. We want to be with our Bible, whether it's electronic or physical. We always want to be meditating about it and, re and referring to it and studying it. And we see, on the other hand, he that commits sin is of the devil, a child of Satan, for the devil sins from the beginning. And again, John chapter 1, if we say we have no sin, sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. We're still in the flesh. We're only saved in our spirit. We await the salvation of our soul on the return of Christ, and then we're going to receive a glorified spiritual body for eternity. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. We see the sin in us, and we, we're constantly trying to confess and correct that sin. 
We also see that a characteristic of Christians is the faith of Jesus. Romans, uh, Re Revelation 14 says, Here is the patient of saints, here they that keep the commandments of God, and we keep the faith of Jesus. It's like, well, what does that exactly mean? We keep the faith of Jesus. Well, we remember that he is the faithful witness. Jesus Christ is our model. He's the faithful witness. He's faith incarnate. He's the faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead. He was faithful till death. He loved us and washed him our sins in his own blood. He's the faithful one. Revelation 19.11, I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. And see, he that sat on was called faithful and true. And that's referring to Jesus Christ. He's true because he's the word of God. And he's faithful because he was faithful till death. And in righteousness, he, does he judge and make war? He is, that's why we keep the faith of Jesus. We keep the fact that he is our model. He is our savior. He is the one that's faithful. We're not faithful in the flesh. He's the one that's faithful. 1 Peter 4, 19, Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing, as unto a faithful creator. We patiently endure. We patiently wait for that blessed hope in eternity. And he's a faithful creator. He, that's what faith is all about, is that, that he is faithful. He'll do it. We put our trust in him, and we're given that faith to be able to really follow him. So it's important to understand that it's the faith of Jesus Christ that saves. It's given to us as a gift. It's his gift to us, which we're going to look on the next slide. Galatians 2.16, a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. It's not our faith that saves us. If we make our free will decision and make a decision for Christ, that's not going to work. It's when we're, we're born again, we're given the Spirit of God, and we're given the faith of Christ. Even the righteousness of God, which is by the faith of Jesus Christ. It's Jesus' faith that saves. It's his faithfulness that saves. Unto all them that believe, for there is no difference. But the scripture concluded all under sin, that the, prom the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. We believe because he called us. He called us to himself. He gave us the faith to believe. And here are some relatively clear passages that testify to the fact that Christians, we don't muster up and generate our own belief and make that final decision for Christ. That's not true. Some people say, well, Christ cast the vote, Satan cast the vote, and, and people have to cast the deciding vote to believe in Jesus. That's just blasphemy. We are given the faith of Christ to believe. For it is given in it is get, it is to unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on him, it's given to us to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. Faith is given to us. We believe on him, it's given to us to believe on him, and then we live a life of suffering and persecution because we're we're patiently, faithfully waiting. 2 Peter 1, 1, Simon Peter, servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Faith is obtained. It's not our faith that makes the decision for Christ. It's a faith that's, that's beautiful. It's, it's spiritually, it's given to us from Christ. It's a faith from God that's given to us. He's the one that causes us to believe. Faith is a gift of God. Ephesians 2, 8, for by grace you're saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. The faith that you believe, it's not yours. It's a gift of God. It's the faith that's given to us of Christ. John six sixty five. no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. Christians, it's given to them to come to Christ. John three twenty seven. a man can receive nothing unless it be given to him from heaven. Our spiritual, whatever we are spiritually, it's all from Christ. Whether our salvation, our holiness, our sanctification, we've done none of it. It's all to the credit and glory of God. Colossians 2, you were raised with him through the faith of the working of God. Faith is actually a work of God that's done to us, and it's given to us. And we see in Revelation 14, 13, that those who are blessed they may rest from their labors. 
And we saw this when we looked at the fifth seal and the, concerning the tribulation martyrs, and I'll tag that uh, video on this slide. White robes are given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest, yet for a little season unto their fellow servants also and the brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. It was a picture of those faithful Christians during the great tribulation that are spiritually killed, physically they die, and, and they, they're, they're under the soul, and they were given rest, which is salvation. Matthew 11, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's the promise of Christ, of salvation. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. You shall find salvation for your souls in Christ. To rest from their labors is to rest from the works of this world and the, the, the toil and the labor that occurs. It's rest in Christ. Okay, so just a quick summary. The second beatitude, a lot of beautiful spiritual truth here. To be blessed is the highest spiritual good. It's opposite of cursed, cursed, but it's salvation. It's all about salvation. Be blessed in heavenly places is to be saved. It's the highest spiritual good we can receive. The characteristics of the Christian life, we're dead. We're dead with Christ, but we, 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 we crucify the flesh in our lusts and desires. Our life is characterized by patience and obedience to God's commands, which are found in the Bible. Our, the Christian's works follow them. They're characterized by good works. The faith of Christ that we're saved by, it's a gift. It's given to us to believe. It's a beautiful thing. Rest is eternal salvation with Christ. So now we're going to move on. Part 111, next video, the harvest or the reaping of the earth. It's a beautiful picture. It's talking about the salvation of God's people. We're going to look at that in the next video. Please consider subscribing and thank you for watching this video.